Hello everyone, today's tutorial is Christmas inspired. I wanted to create something classic and timeless, so here is a modern take on old Hollywood glamour. It's easy, wearable and pictures beautifully. I like to start with the eyes, priming the lids with Benefit Stay Don't Stray. Mine is a baby sample size, I love it. This product is tinted so it creates a clean canvas for our eyeshadows. I prefer this to say MAC Paint Pots because it doesn't emphasize any texture or lines on the eyelid. Dust a powder foundation above the crease to mattify any tackiness so that our powder eyeshadows blend easily. Brows for me are a fashion accessory and I modify them depending on the look. Using a damp brush and a brow powder, I'm starting with the body of the brow, filling any sparse areas and developing a bit of structure. My arch is naturally quite angled and severe, so I rounded the peak and added some volume to the tail to achieve a more 1940s vintage brow shape. You'll see this kind of brow in the earlier shots of Marilyn Monroe. It's quite a bushy, wholesome brow, and I think it works well for this look. Brow gel is a must if you've altered the natural shape of the eyebrow. You've got to plaster those hairs in the right direction and show them who's boss. Onto the eyes, I'm blending a pale peach shade above the crease as a transition shade. I'm using warm shadows in this look because that's what suits my colouring, but feel free to use greys or cooler browns if you prefer. Next, you'll need two matte shades, a medium and a deeper shade. Build some extra depth through the socket with your medium shade. I'm blending the shadows quite high towards the brow because I have heavy eyelids and I want that shading to be apparent when my eyes are open. If you have gorgeous, deep sockets, I'm so jealous, you won't need to do much shading at all. Onto the deeper shade, nestle that tight into the crease and blend from outer to inner corner. Note that the eyeshadow shape is very round, there's no heavy contouring at the outer corners. Then doing a once over with a clean brush because I'm a perfectionist like that. I'm using a pigment today, a soft sandy gold. Yes, I'm happy with that description. Makeup Geek Afterglow. They come with a sifter now, thank God. Mine is half empty because I took a bath in this pigment and Adrian had to vacuum me down. It was not my finest moment. Wet a brush, pick up the pigment and then mash it on the back of your hand until the mixture is perfectly smooth. If it's chunky on your hand, it's going to apply chunky on the eye. You can see that when this pigment is used wet, we achieve a beautiful high gloss finish. Smooth the product all over the mobile lid with a slick brush. A concealer brush works well here actually. Now you know the drill, look down and wait for that lid to dry entirely before attempting to blend. I'm taking this moment to stalk people on Instagram. Come on, we all do it. Diffuse the edges with something like MAC texture, which is ideal for this purpose because it has a teeny bit of shimmer which aids in the blending process. Go for a satin eyeshadow, nothing too shimmery or the eyes will start to look frosty, which is not my thing, but it might be yours, you do you. Grab your favourite black gel liner and a flat push brush. The Hakuhodo J521D1 is the best on the market, in my humble opinion, because it's so damn minuscule. I'm pushing the gel liner into the base of the lashes. This look is not about the eyeliner, we just need a touch of definition and the thinnest of lines that will conceal the false lash band. Give the lashes a quick curl and using the same brush and gel liner, tight line the upper lash line. If your eyeballs will not tolerate tight lining then obviously skip it, but for me it's a non-negotiable step. House of Lashes Tigress. These lashes made the look. A little bit piecey, really elongated at the outer corners, very Marilyn Monroe, bedroom eyes, Hollywood style it, you catch my drift. Holy crap. P.S. Makeup Geek gel liner is crazy long lasting. Bioderma won't remove it. Look at that. Cleaning up any fallout with some face cream and onto under eye concealer. I'm knocking back any discoloration in the inner corners and also dabbing some product on the lower lash line. I plan to add some eyeshadow there and MAC Pro Longwear doubles up as an eyeshadow primer. I also added a touch of concealer around the lips. My natural lip line is blurry and I'll be carving out a crisp red lip a little later on. Oh my god, new favourite foundation. The Kogan Do Aqua. Medium coverage, satin finish and so damn skin like. The finish, it just looks like skin. 
Shade 213 is also very olive for my fellow green people out there and it also pictures beautifully. With this sort of look you can go matte or dewy, whatever you prefer, anything goes. Set the entire face with a translucent powder so that the blush and contour adhere evenly and let's quickly finish off the eyes. Makeup Geek Frappe, kind of similar to MAC Soft Brown, running that along the lower lash line. The tiniest dab of black eyeshadow, remove the excess on the back of your hands and buff on the outer corners for just a little bit of haze. My lower lashes are absurdly long so I need a bit of mascara but I comb them with a clean spoolie afterwards so that the lashes appear feathery and not spidery. Hitting the upper lashes with some mascara also. Highlight the inner tear ducts with a shade that mirrors the tones on the eyes. My eyeshadow is warm so I chose a pale gold highlight. A bit of nude eyeliner in the lower waterline because my eyes are perpetually red. First world problems such is life. MAC Omega is my no contour contour, so to speak. Rather subtle on medium skin tones, but adds a bit of dimension that translates well in photographs. Now, it would appear that contouring has developed a bad name in the past few years, but they did contour and shape the face in the 40s and the 50s. Just keep the placement small by using a fluffy eye brush. Adding a soft sheen to the highest points of the face with the Gorgeous Cosmetics Prism Powder, this highlighter is very subdued, so you can add a bit to the forehead and the nose without the disco ball effect. It's a no-brainer. Carve out the lip line with a red pencil and fill in the body of the lips. Now again, I want that 40s, 50s-ish lip shape, so I added volume to the outer portions of the upper lip and rounded the peaks of the cupid's bow. It's a minor alteration, but it makes the look a little bit more authentic. I love this lip palette. I whip it out all the time just for inspiration. I've chosen an orangey red lipstick today, which is harmonious with my warm eyeshadow. But if you have chosen cooler eyeshadows, then you might opt for a blue based red. For blush, I've chosen Makeup Geek Spellbound, which is a pale but vibrant coral. It's one of those complexion brightening shades, perfect if you find that red lips tend to drain your face of colour. The blush placement is sculptural, shading along the cheekbones as they would have done in the 50s. I put some effort into my hair today. It was a momentous occasion. Map out a deep side part and curl the hair with a wand. Brush out the curls with a paddle brush so that they flow together and voila, old Hollywood hair. I'm making it sound easy. It was hard. I learned it off YouTube. Apparently you can learn lots of stuff there. I hope you guys all have a wonderful day, a wonderful Christmas, and I will speak to you all very soon. Bye-bye.